Hello guys, Ryan from Husky Moving here, Arlington, Massachusetts. We are a full service uh, residential and commercial moving company. Um, we do handyman work, disposal work, um, what do we do? A lot of assembly work, um, a lot of random stuff around the house you wouldn't think of a moving company as a way. Uh, it's allowed me to um, <clears throat> put less stress on the old body. I mean, I get paid the same no matter what I'm doing. So if you want me to move pillows around, I get paid the same as if I'm moving pianos around, which I got to be honest with you, it feels ridiculous most of the time, but it is what it is. The point of the story is if I'm getting paid either way, it's to my benefit to try to navigate down the roads that are as easy as humanly possible. Um, Anywho, that is not the topic of the video today. Uh, the topic of the video today is going to be payroll expenditures. Now, uh, I am not an expert in this by any stretch. I am a very small company. I've only been in business for two years, so I'm figuring it out as I go along. Um, just my thoughts on payroll. And again, it doesn't make it right. Um, I'll be transparent and start this video off by saying that I actually lost a guy... Uh, Maybe like three months ago, four months ago, three months ago. I don't know. It doesn't matter. I lost the guy because he didn't get feel like he was getting paid uh, well enough, compensated well enough. Um, so I want to start off the video by saying that. So I am not an expert. Um, I would have loved to have had this gentleman continue working with me because he was fantastic. Uh, I could not really have asked for anything better. And I mean that sincerely. Um, it was a big loss to me both uh, personally, and we were definitely worse off for it as a business for sure. A thousand percent. Um, there's no way around it. And, um, that was a hard one. Not going to lie. Um, so anyway, uh, I'm probably going to talk about that a little bit. Um, and also maybe like what I learned from that, uh, and also, uh, maybe my thought process behind that because it, it was important. It was an important learning experience. I think for me, um, I've never had to like navigate that before per se. Um, so, uh, what happened with that situation is, and then I'll, I'll go into my thought process on, um, maybe like how I've chosen to pay people. Um, again, doesn't make it right. I'm not an expert. I have very little experience doing it. So I want to, all of what I'm about to say comes from that position. Not an expert, very little experience trying to figure it out as I go. Having said that, you're going to be in the same position at some point and have to figure this out as you go too. So here's what we had going on. Uh, a friend of mine that I used to work with at another moving company years ago, um, happened. we happened to run into each other one day and I didn't mention anything about work. He actually said, hey, if you have a looking for anyone, I got some hours. Um, uh, I, I lost my job due to COVID, but he didn't really lose it. He was at home getting paid to stay at home. So that's important because he's drawing a full paycheck to stay at home and do nothing. Um, which is important to the story. Um, he was, uh, had a lot of days in his hour. Like all of us do when we don't have a job, we have a lot of free time that we don't, we're not used to having. And so he was like, as a way to stay, I think it's a way to stay in shape, uh, and also make some extra money. He was like, Hey, if you need some hours, uh, let me know. I'll come work for you. I'll give you some hours, whatever. So he wanted up doing that. He was amazing. Awesome. Great. Just a great kid all around. Forget about work. Just a great kid. Great person. Type of kid you want to spend time with at a barbecue. Type of kid that you know is going to have your best interest at heart at always. Um, just a genuinely good, good person. So I was really, really thankful and happy to have him on board. Um, and what wound up happening, for better or worse, is that he wound up getting another uh, part-time job doing something that he was super interested in. Uh, that was a passion of his. And he was also um, drawing a full paycheck from his other job, the COVID-related job, that still he hadn't gone back for. And then the moving business is just tough. It's a tough business. It, it requires a shitload of work and it requires a lot of unselfishness. And there's just a lot of things that go into it that unless you've done it, you don't really necessarily understand. Um, it's a lot of giving. And other than the money, there's not much taking back. It's literally just you just giving, 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 giving. The only thing that comes back is money. That's it. Literally, that's it. And you give a lot for that trade off. It's not a great business to be in, and I'm highly aware of that. And he, uh, without boring you with the details, he felt like he should be making more money. Um, and I was trying to keep uh, payroll to what I would consider to be a normal, healthy amount where, it, at least from my perspective, it was a good go between, between I personally thought I was um, taking care of him financially, uh, 
while also understanding that he needs to take care of the business financially as well. So there's got to be a middle point. Um, where I was comfortable with, he wasn't comfortable with anymore. And after a while, he decided it was no longer worth it for him to be here. Um, he thought he should be making more money for the sacrifice he was making. Um, I don't begrudge that of him. Uh, we had what I would consider to be, given the circumstances, the awkwardness of that conversation, a relatively amicable split. Um, which I hope he feels the same way. Um, first and foremost, we were friends before we ever started being coworkers. And when the coworkers part goes away, I always, hopefully, I'm hoping that we maintain a friendship. Um, business can be tough, obviously. Uh, and I don't want that. I would never want that to get in the way of what came first, which is a friendship. Uh, and I mean that sincerely. Uh, so I, as best as I knew how to do, given the fact that I have very little experience doing this, I attempted to wish him well, um, <clears throat> make it easy for him to, to leave, get out the door. Um, I hope he feels the same way. And my hope is that uh, at some point we can reconvene and, and dap and have a good time and blah, blah, blah. Um, I hope that at least. Um, the only reason I mention all that is because it's important for you to know that I'm not, like I said, I can't say this enough. I'm not an expert. I've had, this, this would be what I would consider to be an issue. Um, I thought I was taking care of someone. He didn't agree and left. So, you know, I know that happens in every business, but I got to be honest with you. When you're the one who's responsible for making decisions, if you have even the smallest amount of heart whatsoever, that you take that personally. That, that sucks. You know, like you want to feel like everyone's happy at all points. And, you know, um, it just sucks. It was, it was hard for me to take it. And I, I'm sure it was hard for him because on his level, if I look at things from his point of view, he was feeling like he wasn't getting compensated for the sacrifice that he was putting out properly. He wasn't getting compensated properly for the sacrifice he was putting out, which for him, that probably makes him feel like shit. And I'm aware of that. I felt like that before jobs too. And I know how that makes you feel. That can make you feel really shitty. Um, so I didn't begrudge him leaving on any level. You know, he's doing, he has to do what's best for him and I get it. Um, unfortunately, I obviously have to do what's best for the company too, which is kind of where people come at odds, which sucks. But anyway, the reason I tell you that whole story is, like I said, I'm not an expert, um, Try to figure it out as I go. I used to keep track of the old, the last movement company I worked at, I used to keep track of almost every day when we came home, I would uh, figure out what the company had taken in for uh, accounts receivable. So I would have the checks from the day, no matter how many jobs we did, I would have all the checks. So let's just say for shits and giggles, we did $1,000 just to make the math easy. We did $1,000 worth of business. I had $1,000 worth of checks. Um, and then I would figure out what, uh, the company had paid for in payroll because I knew my salary, obviously. And I knew most of the salaries of the other guys that were working there. Um, and so I could figure out based on how many hours that we all were clocking in and out for, because I would do the hours. I would say, you know, like uh, Oak, which is my nickname. Oak worked. So let's just say Oak, Scott, and uh, Ted worked uh, 6.5 hours. Now, obviously, I can then figure out the percentage based on what we took in versus what's going off of payroll, right? So that's all I know is the payroll percentage at that point. But that's important because over time, you can get a, a very, you can get dialed into a very good average of what you're paying for payroll. If I remember correctly, their payroll was roughly, on any given day, was roughly around like 32, 33% averaged out over time. Um, if you, if I average out my payroll when I'm, when I have two guys, like, so I'm working as like an owner operator, but if you assume that I'm making the same as the, the other guy in payroll, um, and you factor out what my payroll would be, it would be significantly higher. It would be like, I think like roughly right around 40% ish, which is significant. It's a, it's a large amount of money, but <clears throat> I think, um, I, I'm paying more than those guys were paying, um, also, this was like, you know, I was working for them, uh, let's call it four years ago and prior to that. So obviously inflation has gone up, obviously. Um, so you're going to have to pay people more by default. Um, so that's part of it, of course. Uh, but also the other part of it, and this is just, I'm not saying there's a right or wrong. I'm just telling you what my reality is versus their reality. They were a much larger company. They had at the time, they had... I believe they had four trucks, uh, roughly at any given time, anywhere from like six to 14 employees in the summertime ish. They had a storage facility. They had an office. Um, they had their owner on payroll. Uh, they had a, um, 
like an office manager. I don't have any of that stuff, like none of that stuff. And so they had a giant amount of ex expenditures to, to have a much larger business than I have. They're a significantly larger company than I am. And so they have a ton more expenditures, which is very important because they have a lot of bills that I don't have to pay right now. Um, and so by default, of course, they're going to have to then um, cut up their percentages tighter to all the things they need to pay for, which is very important, obviously. I can afford to pay a little bit more because I don't have any of those expenditures. And so by my way of thinking, and again, this is where the reason I told you this story about the last employee that left is important is because I don't want you to think that I have it all figured out because I don't, obviously. If I did, that kid would still be working with me. Um, I've chosen to pay uh, roughly around 40% of, of what would be payroll, assuming I'm drawing a salary, like commensurate to what the other gentleman is making if we're on a two-man crew, um, of about 40% roughly, uh, which is significantly higher, but... Um, there's a lot of trade-offs that go with that. So while you're losing money for sure, like I'm, I shouldn't say losing money, that's a bad way to look at it. While you, while you have less money to uh, in the company um, coming in, because it's going out the payroll, there are a lot of other things you need to factor in. So first and foremost is employee happiness. That's the biggest thing. And then the next real thing I want to talk about in deciding what you're going to pay out in payroll, a couple of different things. There's a you got to be real weary of having this idea of like you want to you want to get away with paying the least amount possible to get the most done. In the short term, I understand why people do it. I get it. Um, it puts more money in your pocket theoretically. Uh, but you got to keep in mind the moving business, and this is a, a large, a major point. The moving business, more so than any other business I've ever been in, breaks people really, really quickly. A lot of people aren't built for it. A lot of people don't want to be built for it. And that's fantastic. More power to you. Nobody dreams of being operating a moving company when they're young. It's just not a thing. You don't, that's not a dream of anyone. Um, it's something that people fall into because of money. And that's it. That's the only reason it's money. Um, having said that, um, you got to be real careful about breaking people because the industry itself can be really challenging. There's a lot of things that go into it that people don't understand unless you're actually out in the field every day doing what's required. There's a lot of things. I'm not going to bore you with the details. The, the, the gist of the story is I've seen it break people, like literally break people in front of me. I've watched grown men be reduced down to the point where they're like, uh, I tap out. Like literally, I they don't they don't say the words I tap out, but you literally watch them in their demeanor their body language their mind you watch them break it's like the body and the mind are crumbling and giving way and they're giving the figurative i tap out and it manifests it way in certain certain ways it will i've seen a bunch of guys like tap out in certain ways where they just kind of like lost it one day over like literally nothing and that was their way of getting out i've seen guys manufacture uh like drama out of nowhere as a way to like get out um for me personally, I've exploded a couple times as a way to get out, like anger. And that was my way of saying, fuck it, I'm done. Um, there's a bunch of different ways it could happen. It's very rare that someone will say, like, I quit. It's usually like they've been thinking they want to quit for a while, and then the smallest thing pushes them over the edge, you know? Um, and I'm talking about myself now. I'm not talking about other people. I've had that happen to me. Um, the point of this and the reason why I mentioned is you got to be real careful about breaking with people. People in any industry need to feel like they're being compensated well and taken care of. Um, in the moving business, I would say more so than other industries, you really need to be careful about like not because you're already asking them to give their physical all literally in, in many ways, their mental all as well. And then if you come at it on the other side and say, well, I want to get away with paying you as, as little as humanly possible. That obviously doesn't make any sense. Obviously, you're going to get what you pay for, of course. Um, and so the idea that you're like losing money is a misguided way of, of thinking about it. The way you want to try to think about it, I think, and again, I'm not an expert. Take this with a grain of salt. The way you want to try to think about it is you're not losing money. You're gaining customer happiness, which is going to, sorry, uh, employee happiness, which is going to manifest itself in a whole variety of different ways. They're going to be happier on the jobs. They're going to be more willing to do things for the customer. When the customer does something dumb, they're going to be uh, less likely to, to have some sort of a reaction to it. They're just going to let it go and go like, all right, well, you know, it's part of the industry, whatever. This is why I'm getting compensated well, blah, blah, blah. Um, so those are a lot of the things you want to take into account when you're deciding what you want to pay you guys, I think. 
Uh, don't be penny wise and pound foolish. That's a that's a major thing, major flaw of mine oftentimes in, in this world and something I've been working on for, I don't know, let's call it 25 years is this idea of like, am I thinking of this the right way or am I like really, am I thinking I'm, I'm, hurt, I'm helping myself in the short term, but am I really harming myself long term? And this is something I struggle with all the time is like this short term thinking. Um, am I thinking about this right or do I need to think about it differently to get a different result down the line and am I willing to do things differently to get that different result which is the key um, very important to think that through um, there are many other things that go into it that unfortunately have to it's not quite as simple as just I'm going to pay them a shitload because obviously as you know there's a anyone who's running their own business there's a, there's a bunch of different things that need to get paid for um, and it can be hard when you're not in that role and you're not the one cutting the checks to I'm not going to say to understand that inherently we all know that anytime you run a business, there's a lot of costs that go along with it, obviously. But when you're the one who's actually dishing out the, the paper for it, it's a lot easier to see like, all right, well, this is why I need to cap my payroll at X because I just, for example, one of the things that happened with me with this, this uh, kid who was working with me that I absolutely loved, um, it just so happened that the end of his, his run here kind of coincided with an issue where the, our truck had a major malfunction that we needed to pay for, which was, it was uh, like $5,400 or something. Um, and in our kind of like last argument uh, that him and I got into over pay, one of the things I said to him, and in retrospect, uh, this might not have been the right thing to say, um, and I'm aware of that. Uh, I said something along the lines of, you know, for every hour we do, it's going to take me like, it was like 97 hours worth of work just just to pay for this one thing that had just gone wrong in the truck right and so when you look at it that way i think it, if you're on my end of it it's easier to understand why you need to cap payroll at a certain amount but when you're on the, his end of it you know he doesn't he doesn't necessarily care about that he just cares about his effort versus his compensation which i understand like i get it i'm not no judgment on either front, I understand both sides of it. Um, I mean that sincerely. Uh, but it's easier, you know, when you're in the business aspect of it, it's easier to see that side of it as opposed to when I was on the employee side of it. It was easier for me to just see that side of it, obviously. Um, anyway, guys, I hope this was um, kind of helpful. I know there's some random issues I talked about, uh, but it, all, all this goes into like deciding how you're going to, you know, your pay structure. Uh, oh, one more thing I'll talk about real quickly before I sign off in this video. And this is this is not necessarily related to pay per se, uh, but it's... Um, actually, you know what? Fuck, I'm going to save that for another video. I gotta, I'll got i do another video on this one. Um, try to cap this not quite so long as it already has become. Thank you for listening, guys. If you found any value of this, um, my contact information is at the end of the video. You can get uh, my email address. Our website is huskymoving.com. I am Ryan O'Connor. Thank you for listening. Like and subscribe if you found any value whatsoever in this. Thank you.